Okay, this is our day 11A, chapter 14, Nutrition and Fluid Balance. Uh, as usual, we're going to start with section 2. So open to chapter 14, go to section 2, right here. We know that, uh, you know, in back home we have a slogan that man must work, which means man must eat. If you don't eat, you're not gonna you're not gonna live long. You, the body will just slowly waste away, and then you know, with no nutrients in the body, you're not gonna survive long. However, as, in the elderly, as they as we get older and older, the ability to test food decreases. Um, they don't want to eat. That's why they lose weight a lot. Not that they intentionally don't want to eat. They don't have the appetite. They, they cannot taste the food. They cannot smell the food. They cannot enjoy the food. So you might be smelling the food, enjoying the food, but they're not enjoying the food. They're not smelling the food. And that's because of their aging process. So let's start with definitions. What is nutrition? It's just how the body uses food to maintain uh, growth and maintain good health. The opposite is malnutrition, where someone is not getting enough food and then they're malnourished, you know? And I told you a story how we used to send people to the hospital for malnutrition or, or uh, dehydration, and the hospital will report the nursing home to the Department of Health because there's no excuse that the government is paying us to feed them and give them water, the basic human need. And we don't do that enough and they, they end up having to go to the hospital because they are dehydrated and they are malnourished. And that's, there's no excuse for that. So we have to do everything we can to encourage them to eat, uh, be patient with them and so on to avoid you know, weight loss. Aging and illness affects nutrition. You know, as I said earlier, we get older, or certain type of sickness will affect our appetite. So we have to understand that, and then it will result in weight loss. <clears throat> Problems that can affect nutrition. Again, this is pl problem with the elderly that have some kind of sickness also. Um, less saliva is produced as they get older, they're not drinking enough, so the body's not producing enough saliva, which you, which they need, or we all need to process the food, to chew the food and swallow it well. You need saliva. Some side effects of medication. Some medications that they take affects their appetites. They're not able to eat well because of uh, lack of appetite. Decrease in activity level. They're not moving around. Um, the sense of smell and sense of taste is reduced. So they're not testing the food, they're not smelling the food. So nothing appetizing about the food. Or they don't they cannot see well. So they're not seeing the food to see how it looks good. Or they have dental problem. They use dentures, dentures don't fit well, they have broken teeth they're not gonna eat well. Or they didn't get, we didn't give them good oral care. You know, when you brush their teeth, when you brush your teeth, you enjoy the food better. So we have to give them good oral care in the morning before they eat their breakfast. Or they are depressed, and lack of interaction with other people, and they don't wanna eat their food. Or they have a special diet that they hate. First of all, they already have the all those other problems, then let's say they're diabetic or they have hypertension. Now the diet says no salt. How are you gonna enjoy food with no salt? Their, their taste, like their ability to taste the food is already decreased naturally. Now the diet says no salt. You know, um, some residents used to say that, um, that the food just doesn't have any taste, so how are they supposed to eat something that is tasteless? 
Would you eat something that doesn't have any taste? I said, no. But we still have to eat something for to maintain good health. Okay. Some other illnesses that affect um, how they eat, stroke, um, they're paralyzed on one side, so they have they cannot chew well, they cannot swallow well. Cancer, Parkinson's disease, multiple sclerosis, Alzheimer's. Other factors that influence food preferences, some people are <coughs> either they're fasting during you know during that period, so they're not eating. You have to respect their choice to fast, maybe because of religious reasons. Some people are vegetarians, some people are vegan. So the difference is that vegetarians don't eat any meat, any fish, no poultry product. But some vegetarian will take milk, cheese, yeah. eggs, okay, but not the chicken <coughs> and not the meat. However, vegans is like the extreme of the vegetarians. They don't eat any meat, they don't eat any meat products. No milk, no cheese, nothing that comes from an animal. So it's important, again, to honor their food preferences as much as possible. I mean, if they start asking for fufu, they can't get that because, you know, we're not going to cook fufu in a nursing home and cook uh, a juicy soup and all that, if that's their preference. Uh, what you would do is inform the family to bring those kind of foods for them. Talk to the dietitian. The dietitian and the family can get together. The dietitian can tell the family how to prepare the food to still meet their health requirements. When we serve them food, we have to check and see if they, if they like that food or not, or do they want a substitute. Um, in the nursing home, there's a, there's a menu board that tells you what's going to be served the whole week for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and what the substitutes are. So um, you should, should you let them know, oh, if you don't like this particular meal, the substitute for today is this. It's on the board. Um, that way they can um, eat something else. Okay. Reflect on your own regional or cultural food, or religious food preferences. Like, uh, I mentioned the other day that for me, my own personal preference is I have to eat uh, fufu and uh, egusi soup every three days. Otherwise, I feel like I have not eaten. So, but when it's not possible, then I was in Florida for two weeks. Um, <coughs> There was no fufu restaurant around, so I had to eat whatever was on the menu. But when I came back, the first thing I wanted to do was to eat my fufu. So, nutrients, that's what you get from eating food. When you eat the food, the food gives um, uh, nutrients. The body will take the nutrients from the food, which is necessary for the body, for the wellness of the body. Metabolism is the process of breaking down the nutrients, breaking, breaking down the food to turn it into nutrients for the body to now absorb it and use it for energy. So good health requires a daily amount of each of the main nutrients um, for, the, for the body to grow well and function properly. All right. So what are the six basic nutrients? You have to know this. It could come up in your GNA exam. So number one is water, and also know that water is the most essential of the nutrients. That's a quiz question tomorrow, or oh, not tomorrow. <laughs> Whenever you're doing the, the, the 10, 11, 12, you're going to get this question. Which of the following is the most important nutrient for life? Your answer is water. Okay. Helps with digestion and absorption. Helps to maintain normal body functions. Um, <coughs> then you have fats, good source of energy, add flavor to food. Um, different types of fats, but you don't you don't need to worry about those. Trans fats, uh, mono, unsaturated, polyunsaturated, all of that. Then you have carbohydrates. Provides um, energy. 
also provides fiber. Then we have protein. Protein is essential for tissue growth. Those that have big, deep wounds, like stage four wounds, they need to be on a high protein diet to help with the wound healing. Also provides energy. Then we have the vitamins. Vitamins are essential for body functions. You have two categories, fat soluble, A, D, E, and K, water soluble, B and C. Again, you don't need to memorize those ones. Then we have minerals, zinc, iron, calcium, magnesium. Again, they each perform different functions in the body. You have to know this section here. Um, the, definitely there's going to be a question from this section in the GNA exam. In 2011, the um, Department of Agriculture came up with a program called MyPlate. Um, if you go to myplate.com, you'll see the app. Um, it was to emphasize eating healthy. I think one of the programs that uh, Michelle Obama did with the schools and stuff like that. Eating healthy, um, eating vegetables, fruits, grains, protein, and low fat in dairy. So that's what your plates, your meal is supposed to look like when you eat. It should be that half of your plate should be fruits and vegetables. Okay? Then on the other, the other half should be grains and a small portion protein. There should be a cup of dairy, like milk, um, with your meal. But we don't do that. <laughs> when we want to eat, that whole bowl is my fufu bowl. <laughs> then another bowl is all protein and different types of meat in it. And then there's no portion control because when we start eating, if the soup is sweet, we don't stop until the soup is finished, right? You know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> True. <laughs> so we don't. So we just eat anyhow, but we have to watch what we eat, especially as healthcare providers and wellness educators. Because our job is to make sure our residents are well um, by you know controlling what they eat and encouraging them to exercise. But we also have to do the same thing. Vegetables and fruits, again, we talked about how it should be half of your plate. Uh, dark green, red, orange vegetables have the best nutritional content. Vegetables are low in fats, cattle calories. Okay. They also provide fiber and vitamins. Fruits are also low in fats, low in sodium. Fruits provide vitamins and fiber as well. Grains, at least half of all grains should be whole grain. You should be eating like uh, wheat bread and not white bread. Um, grains come from cereal, bread, rice, pasta. Then we have protein, sources of protein. You have the animal-based protein and plant-based protein. The, the animal-based protein, um, meat, seafood, eggs, <coughs> poultry, then the plant-based protein, beans, peas, soy products, nuts, seeds. So for vegetarians that don't eat meat, to get their protein, they, they eat soy products, nuts, um, peanuts, and cashew nuts and stuff. They say to eat seafood twice a week. Seafood is expensive. Uh, in place of meat and poultry, <coughs> but they're healthier. Choose lean meat. Lean meats are the meat that they have cut the fats out. Um, so, eat plant-based protein more often than the animal-based protein. And some nuts and seeds um, are excellent sources of fatty acids as well. Dairy, um, the most important thing to know here is that we should be using low fat milk like one percent milk or two percent in my household we use two percent milk but when the kids were very young we use whole milk because they needed um, more calcium and for bone growth um, fat-free milk um, 
soy products and uh, enriched with calcium are also an alternative to dairy food. So remember these additional tips for having a healthy choice. Balance calories, enjoy your food, but eat less. Uh, I see people, um, and I've done this before too, go to the all-you-can-eat place, because it says all-you-can-eat. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, okay, I paid $15 or $10 for this. So I'm gonna eat my money's worth. You go the first round, get a big bowl, go the second round, go the third round. You're doing your body harm, it's not healthy. Just eat a portion, you know, go back, get some fruits, okay. All you can eat doesn't mean to kill yourself. Avoid, avoid oversized portion. It's once in a while. <laughs> so once in a while you should, you know, overfeed yourself. All right. Avoid, um, I mean, food to eat more often are vegetables, fruits. Food that are less fat, and so on. Drink water instead of sugary drinks, instead of those sodas, and you know, drink water instead. Diet card. You have to be very careful when you're, before you feed the resident, before you give them their tray. When the cards come from the kitchen, they're going to come with with diet cards for each resident. The diet card will have each resident's name, their preferences, and their allergies. Whatever food they are allergic to or don't prefer, it will be listed on the card. Their name is on there. So before you hand them the tray, check the name, check the card, and make sure it's the right person. Because if they're allergic to seafood, and you pick up a tray with seafood, and it's not their tray, and you give it to them and they eat, they're gonna have problems. Um, and as time goes on, you should know your resident, know what their diet calls for, um, what they cannot eat, and what they, you know, what they should not eat based on their diet. Some of them will want to eat it, you know, they know they're not supposed to have certain food. For example, the diet says no salt because of their heart problem and they asking somebody to give them salt from their tray, or they're asking you to give them salt. You know, you don't know to say, no, uh, Miss Susie, you know, your diet says no salt. Some of them will say, I'm sick and tired of you all. You know, how am I supposed to eat something that is tasteless? Well, you just, um, you know, try to understand their frustration. But again, it's because of their health, condition, the dietitian prescribed those restrictions. So dietary department is responsible for the food. Um, I used to work in the dietary department. Um, it's interesting, where we're going for clinical at Kensington Nursing Home, that was my first job when I came to the US a long time ago, before some of you were born. Um, so I worked there in their kitchen, and our job was the cooks will finish cook, preparing the food, they will leave, then we will now share the food according to the diet. So we'll have a line, we we'll have the trays lined up, then we put their diet cards in it. So we know who's supposed to get what and who is not supposed to get what. And then for that unit, the cart that goes to that unit will be there. Once we put everything, we, we load them up in the cart, we take the cart upstairs to that unit and then the, the CNS and the nurses will now pass out the trays. So that's the job of the dietary department. So let's talk about some special diets, you know, different types of diets that you should know. Generally, a special diet is a diet that the doctor have ordered for a particular reason. It could be health diagnosis, it could be they're going for surgery. Doctor says no solid food. Everything should be liquid the day before the surgery. So that's a, a special diet. Um, sometimes after, right after surgery, depending on the type of surgery, the, the doctor could also order a special diet until they 
get better before they can now upgrade to solid food. Puree diet is food that has been grounded. It means they cannot swallow anything solid. So they're going to grind it completely. And <laughs> resin will always say that it looks like cat poop. That they don't want to eat that, it looks like cat poop. You know, they'll, they'll grind the chicken and put it in one, and scoop it in one section. Grind the vegetable, it's dark. They put it in one section. <laughs> then maybe a mashed potatoes and then it will look it just doesn't look appetizing but it's because they don't have teeth to uh, they cannot swallow they cannot chew or they cannot swallow well they can only swallow puree if it's grounded already so then it doesn't uh, you know look appetizing to them lactose intolerance is somebody who has inability to break down um, uh, milk products Diuretics, um, these are like medications that make somebody to pee a lot. Intake and output, sorry, intake. We talked about intake and output the other day, but it's just intake and input. They're both the same thing. Um, intake is, you know, how much fluid the person consumes. It could be during the shift or during the day. Same thing as input. Glucose are your natural sugar, like the natural sweetness you have in food, like the natural sugar in potatoes. Those are your natural glucose. So we talked about special diet already. Um, resident who have orders for special diet requires additional care and supervision. You have to make sure that they're not eating anything else other than the special diet and be careful that um, one of the issues that we have in the nursing home. For example, doctor will say no food or only liquid food the day before the procedure. Um, and we've posted on the, resin already knows that, we've posted on the room that they should have nothing to eat if it's a NPO order. Then the next morning we, go, we take the resin to the doctor's office for the procedure you know the doctor is going to ask when was the last time you ate something. Sometimes there was miscommunication that the, uh, no, uh, somebody didn't know the resident wasn't supposed to eat breakfast and they fed them breakfast that morning. Uh, if it's a resident that cannot speak, doesn't know, then they will eat. You feed them, they will eat. That means the, the procedure has to be postponed because we did not follow the proper instruction with the special diet that the doctor ordered. Sometimes the doctor will report the facility to the Department of Health because um, we doctor will bill for just seeing the residents for nothing. Transmission company that came to pick resident up will bill. Uh, we sent a CNA to go with the residents. All of that wasted and we have to reschedule the appointments, all because we did not follow the dietary instruction. So we have to be very careful with that. So um, some of the special diets could be liquid, liquid diet, um, soft diet, mechanical soft. Mechanical soft is, so we have puree that is completely grinded. Mechanical soft is, it is chopped up. Everything is chopped up, but not grinded. That's a little bit more appetizing than the pureed one. We talked about pureed already. Bland, you know, lactose-free, high residue, low residue, modified calorie, low sodium, um, high protein, low protein. It all depends on the person's health and condition. Sometimes we want high protein and high calorie if they're losing weight a lot. Or if they're like, um, back in the day when HIV used to be difficult to manage, people were losing weight a lot, you know, then they used to be on high calorie, high protein diet so that their weights can come up. High potassium, um, fluid restriction, fluid restriction, especially those on dialysis. Since the kidney is no longer processing, filtering the liquid, um, the dialysis 
doctor might write an order that they should not drink more than X number of um, amount of water each day because it affects when they go on the dialysis machine how much the machine has to process. So uh, we, we try to keep an eye on those residents to make sure they don't drink too much if they're on fluid restriction. We talk about diabetic diet already, gluten-free, um, vegetarian. Remember NPO, we talked about that, nothing by mouth. Once a doctor orders that because of a surgery happening the next day or for whatever reason, we have to make sure that they don't drink, they don't eat anything within those period. You have to remove uh, all water, pitcher, anything with food or water from their rooms. So when you're making rounds and resin is NPO, don't leave water on their table because they might be tempted to drink it when they get thirsty. What special diets do you or your members of your family follow? I mentioned mine. Then there's this thickening uh, of liquid that you have to understand. Some people cannot drink ordinary water, especially those that just had stroke. The water is too thin for them to control down their throat, down the esophagus. So it might go into their lungs. But if it's thicker, they can control it. You know, they will swallow it well, but they cannot swallow the water, the thickness of the water because it's too light. So for that reason, the doctor will order that they, they can only take thickened liquid. So there are three types of thickened liquids, which we're gonna talk about. Nectar thick is the thickness of tomato juice. So it'll be ordinary water, but it's thick. It's thick like a tomato juice, they can use a straw to drink it or use a spoon. They have honey thick, which is the same thickness as honey. You have pudding thick, which is the same thickness as a pudding. So those are the three thickness levels. The doctor, there will be an order and um, the charge nurse will let you know when you're taking uh, reports at the beginning of the shift that this person cannot drink ordinary water. It will be on your um, assignment sheet that this person can, this person must have thicken liquid. Normally we'll put, um, the kitchen will bring up those thickened liquid and put their name on the bottle and we put it in their room. So when they want to drink water, you know, that's what they drink. Not ordinary water, they have to drink the water that is that thick, depending on the order. Apathy is just lack of interest, which happens a lot with the residents. They don't have interest in the food, no matter what you do, which means we have to be encouraging them. Why must the nursing assistant report any weight loss so we can address it soon, find out why the resident is, resident is losing weight, do we need to change their diets, or what do we need to do for them to um, regain their weight. Unintended weight loss is when um, there's intended weight loss for those that are overweight and we're trying to reduce it. So that's a planned weight loss. Unintended weight loss is when they just lose weight um, when, when we're not expecting them to lose weight and they lose weight. Uh, normally it's because they're not being fed not enough. So, so things to let you know that the person might lose weight. Um, they need help with eating. A lot of times, some of the res um, when I'm making rounds or going to see a resident in the, in the nursing home, I will go in and the trays is sitting on the table. And uh, sometimes the seniors will just come pick up the tray back to return back to the kitchen and just assume the resident didn't want to eat. But the resident needed help to be fed. And sometimes, sometimes the care plan was not accurate in stating that the resident eats by themselves. So then the seniors think the resident eat by themselves. So you give the tray, come back in 30 minutes, take the tray back and send it down. Without checking to see, did the resident eat? 
why didn't you raise any heat? Because um, I don't know if I mentioned my job is MDS. MDS is nurses that do assessments. We report to the government the, the, the level of care that we're providing. Um, so we go in and see the residents, those that need to be fed, so we can document it correctly because that's how we get paid also. So um, if somebody who supposed to feed themselves, that's what we have in the care plan, then I go in to check on them and they're not able to feed themselves, then that's a problem because they're going to start losing weight and then we need to have an insert. Uh, updates the care plan so that everybody knows that the person needs to be fed. When they eat less than 70%, that means they're not eating enough. To eat enough, they have to eat 70% of the meal or higher. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. um, you all say less than 70%, whereas the book say less than 75%. In case in an exam, which one should we go by? Oh, that, that's what the book says? Yes, 75%. Is that, is that a new book? Yes, new book. Oh, that's a new book. Okay, 75% then. Well, go, go with 75%, so we're going to update that. I didn't know that. So it's 75%. So thank you. We're going to change that. Um, yes, they have... It's 70%. Then you have the old book. Mm -hmm. the, part, the, the PowerPoint is from the old book. Mm -hmm. if, you, if, you're taking the, if you're taking the quiz, because the quiz is still based on the old book, We'll just give you credit if you if you answer 70. yes for seventy. If there's a question like that, then seventy will be the correct answer because it was based on the old book. But we're gonna update that to to be seventy five percent. They have they have mouth problem. They cannot chew. They cannot swallow. They have denture that doesn't fit well. They have difficulty chewing, swallowing. They are coughing and choking then they are, they are afraid to swallow so that they don't choke, they won't eat. Um, they are sad, they are depressed, they are confused, they are wondering, they are pacing, they won't sit still to even eat. So those are signs that tells you the person might, be lo might lose weight since they are not eating. Then um, when they have cold, coldness throughout their body, they are losing weight, um, they have stomach, that is, that look swollen, they are constipated, they, they have stomach pain, those are signs that they are malnourished, okay. Um, dry peeling skin, all of those, muscle weakness, fainting, fatigue, they are tired, they are weak, slow pulse, low blood pressure, low temperature, they have problems sleeping. All of this should be reported so that we can address um, the problem with the family and with the dietitian and basically the care team. So preventing unintended weight loss, um, report any signs to charge nurse, but take your time, be patient with them, try to feed them. We do not want them to lose weight. Sometimes they may need snacks in between the meal. Um, those diabetic residents, they always have an order for snacks in between because, you know, they could have low blood sugar any time. So they should, they should always have something nearby that they can eat, um, candy, um, sandwiches, things like that. Uh, those that are malnourished or they have weight loss problem, they you give them a meal, then there's an order for snacks before the next meal. So nursing assistants play a critical role in assisting the resident to get proper nutrition because we're the one feeding them. So during dining time, during feeding time, you have to make dining experience fun and pleasant. Um, when the food comes, just like if you have a child that doesn't want to eat, you're going to say, oh, baby, the food is yummy, yummy, smells nice. Come taste it, come try some, you know. So follow a routine, um, toilet them, um, sit friends together at the same table. Um, so have like a routine, assist with grooming, encourage if they wear glasses or they wear denture, 
they should have that on the hearing aid give them oral care before meal we said that earlier make sure you wash your hands do you wash you wash your hands or wipe your hands um, again sit friends together um, properly position them so that they can eat well um, one time we, we have inspectors were in the building and you know the tray will come according to their room numbers room one two three four but that's not how they are seated they are scattered all over you could have room one room five and room seven sitting here so Rise room two could be over there. So they're observing us past trays. So we took tray one to room one, tray two to room two, way over there. So tray one started eating, but three of them are in the same table, are on the same table. We didn't know that was wrong. You're supposed to serve one table completely before you go to the next table. Okay, so if friends are sitting together but they are in different rooms, just know which rooms they are. You need to go to tray one, then go to tray five, go to tray seven, and finish with this table. Before you now go to the next table. Doesn't matter what number it is. So we got cited that oh we did not serve the trays properly. I said okay, we learned from that. Um, just like um, I guess in the restaurants when everybody order food they tend to bring the food when everybody's food is ready right instead of okay you're three in a group you order three different things and one person is ready they bring that one the, the person start eating the other two are just sitting there so it's better to serve everybody at one time Give them correct chairs, appropriate chairs to sit, serve food at the current temperature. And that's a big problem. When the, when the kitchen brings the trays up, the seniors are in the rooms, they're changing the residence, some of them are just watching TV, the trays sit there and gets cold. Then by the time we're serving them the tray, they don't want to eat it because the food is cold. It doesn't taste good in the first place. Now it's cold to make matters worse. So, the food needs to be served immediately arrives on the units while it's still warm and we're not allowed to go heat the food up on the unit because we cannot control the temperature we don't know what the temperature is going to be when we put the food in the microwave and that was a problem that we had with the states the state says why are we heating the food what was the temperature how do we know it's not too hot because we're not going to test it we don't have the thermometer to test the temperature on the floor. The kitchen have the temperature, how to test the food, the food temperature. You know the food temperature they stick in the food? It will, it will tell you what the temperature of the food is. So, um, usually when the state are in the building, all of us managers, supervisors, we come out of the room and make sure as soon as, because they're watching, as soon as the tray hits the floor from the kitchen, Everybody start passing the tray. The resident were like, you all never pass the tray. So <laughs> when you, when you, you all never do this before. Oh, now because the state people are here, everybody acting like this is what you do every day. <laughs> you know, you don't want to get in, we don't want to get in trouble. So we pass the tray quickly. But even the nurses, we encourage the nurses to stop passing medication. When the tray comes, everybody should pass the tray so it will, the food will be warm. Okay, um, talk about those. Help them to um, cut the food. Um, if you have to handle the food to cut it, say you want to cut a sandwich or you want to cut the chicken, you need to put on gloves. There's feeding gloves you put on to be able to cut the, or put butter on the bread. Um, be patient, give them enough time to eat. Um, keep the noise level low. Normally we turn the TV off and we can put some light music so that they can enjoy their meal. Be, be cheerful, be positive, kind of um, be smiling to encourage them. If they have additional requests for food, some people want extra plates, or then if they're allowed to have that, then you give, you, um, 
give it, get it for them. Uh, do not encourage them to take food from each other, but then you can, you know, there's nothing you can do to stop if uh, friends say, do you want to eat my, you want my food? And they, that one say yes, you cannot stop them. So you just have to report to the charge nurse. So meals are usually served on trays that are brought from the kitchen. We talk about that. And we have to walk quickly to serve the food so that it doesn't get cold. Um, we talked about this already. Wash hands, you know, check the diet card. Um, if they need to wear, the, uh, put on uh, a protector. Don't call it beep, because beep is for children. Um, those that want to wear that, they, put, they can put it on if they don't want to wear it, but it's optional. During the GNA exam for the skill for feeding the clients, you take a small towel as a protector and just say, it's not listed on the handbook to do that, but it's advisable to do that. So you will do, you will say, oh, Miss Susie, I'm going to put a protector so that we don't, in case we have any accidents, it will not be on your shirt. Is that okay? They say yes, then you put it, you're going to sit, uh, you're going to wipe your hands, you're going to make sure you bring the, uh, the bed up between 70 and 90 degrees so that they don't choke. You're going to sit at eye level with them. Um, you must have already identified their name. Even though you know their name, before you put the tray down on the table, you're going to say, Miss Susie, can you state your full name for me to make sure this is your tray? So, um, all that is on the video, so you can watch it. <laughs> all right. Um, if they're in isolation, you know that all their uh, food has to be served in disposable uh, material um, supply. The tray has to be disposable. The cutleries, everything this has to be disposable. One time. Um, an inspector, one person came from the Department of Health to investigate, I think it was a fall. So she's sitting at the nursing station, going over the documents. But when they're sitting there, their eyes and ears are all over the place. Even though they came for one issue, while they're there, if they find something else, they're going to give us a citation. So there was a room nearby. The resident was on isolation, and it was lunchtime. Trey came from the kitchen. We all know she's from the Department of Health, so everybody knows to be careful. But this CNA took the tray. The tray was regular tray, came from the kitchen. Then she went into the isolation room. She did not put on her PPE. Went in, we were in big trouble. The lady got up, went to the went to the door, asked her to come out. Said, "Did you see the sign on the door? Residence in isolation." And why didn't you put on your isolation gown? Said, "Oh, I'm sorry." Okay, what's your name? Put the name down. And call for the charge nurse. Call for the unit you know, manager and the supervisor. So now she wanted to know how long has she been on isolation? Three days. Why is she still getting regular tray? Mm -hmm. Call the kitchen manager. Were you informed by the nurses that the resident is in isolation? No. So it was not their fault. They didn't know resident was in isolation. So for each day, they fined us 10,000. <coughs> Excuse me. The final ten thousand <coughs> because we could have spread the infection. The, the regular trace now goes back after, after the person is eating. It goes back with the other the trace other and trace. get washed in the same, you know, area. And um, like I said earlier, once there's a problem, we have to come up with a plan of correction, which means everybody had to be retrained on isolation procedure infection control, um, communicating with the kitchen.
those nurses, we already tested those the, the, the nurses that we are responsible for serving that isolated patient. We already tested for TB because the person did not have TB. It was it was not TB. Yeah, it was not TB. So um, I forgot what what specific infection it was, but it wasn't TB. So we have to understand that um, resident needs different levels of assistance. Some people, you just need to put the tray in front of them, they will do the rest. Some other residents, you need to help them open their milk, cut up their food. Some other residents, you need to sit with them and scoop the food and hand it to them and keep reminding them to eat, otherwise they won't eat. They can feed themselves, but they just won't uh, be scooping the food. Some other reason you have to feed them completely. They're totally dependent. So, yeah, uh, what you know, what you do is serve the trays to those that can eat first by themselves. Then those that need some assistance will be next. Then you feed those that need to be fed completely. Those you serve them last. But leave their trays in the cart. Don't go put the tray in front of them when they when you're not ready to feed them yet. Okay. Uh, don't be judgmental. Don't rush them. Um, follow infection prevention precautions. Offer protector. We said that earlier. Sit at eye level. Always tell them what you're gonna eat. I mean, what's being served. Um, if you've watched the uh, feed the feeding resin video. Once you're seated and you're about to feed them, you're going to say, um, Miss Susie, for breakfast we have, and we always use cereal for all of our exam. We use um, um, uh, Frosted Flakes and I think Honey Nut Cherries. So you're going to say, for breakfast today we have Honey Nut Cherries and Frosted Flakes. Which one would you like to eat first? They say, okay. I not cherries, so you're going to give them the cherries. So you have to know what is being served. Okay. And you give them a spoon of the honey nut cherries, give them the person, you have to eat it for real. This is not, um, the examiner will make sure that the cherry comes from a brand new box. She has to open it herself that morning to prepare it. The cutleries, everything has to be new um, because the person have to eat it for real. So they take the first spoon of the honey nut cherry, then, then next you're gonna offer them. Uh, so you, do you want the honey nut cherries again, or would you like to try the uh, frosted flakes, or do you want some water? So we tell of our, all of our students to always say they want water. Don't waste your partner's time trying to eat more more cereal. The examiner just need to see you feed one time offer water one time and you're done so that means if you are the student playing the resident you've you've been fed one time next time you're gonna say you want water so then the, the student will offer water then after the water always wipe them out do then the third the, round uh, the resident water mm -hmm. or you give? no no you you give it to them Okay, yeah, we're assuming that they cannot feed themselves. Mm -hmm. They cannot hold the water. Then on the third round, you're going to offer everything again. You're going to say, next, Miss Susie, do you want the honey nut cherries, the cornflakes, or more water? Then she will say, she's full. Okay? Then that will end the skill. Now you're going to wipe them out again, take that off, wipe their hands again, and then take everything off. Leave them seated. Um, you know, take your chair, um, you know, finish up, and you're done with that skill. Give them the cards. Give them, thank you. <laughs> and um, when you feed them, I know you said um, when you're cutting food for them, you wear glass. When you're feeding them, do you wear glasses? No. Okay. No, unless if they're on isolation. Okay. So it'll be like, you know, as if they're dirty. You don't wear gloves when you're feeding them. Okay, just for. Mm -hmm. In, in. Right, because you're going to handle the food. If you're not going to touch the food, then you don't need to wear gloves. Mm -hmm. So sit at eye level, we talked about that. Um, ask them what they want to eat first. 
never mix the food together. Remember I said like the, the puree food where you have uh, mashed potatoes, uh, grind up uh, meat, grind up vegetable. Some people will like try to mix it together. They don't want you to do that. Just give them items separately. Unless if they ask you to mix it. You had a question? Uh, there was something that Fumi corrected you that I did not get. I just want to hear that. Oh, okay, okay. It's um, that um, give them call light. Oh, just okay. one of the steps you have to take anyway. When you're, when you're done with them and you're going away, you have to give them their call light so they can call, call you for help. Um, put hand over food to test the temperature. Uh, do not blow on it or touch it. Make appropriate conversation. Say positive things. Uh, pay attention to the person you're helping. Do not talk to other staff. Alternate food and water. So if you feed them solid food, give them water. Feed them solid food, give them water. Remember, they're not producing enough saliva. So they need the water to help swallow and to help um, mix the food up um, correctly. If they, want, if they refuse to eat, there's nothing you can do. Try to encourage them. If they still refuse, then you stop. There's nothing else you can do. Feeling a residence, uh, don't go by the book. Go by the steps in your handbook and the video that we made. So that's how you sit and have conversation. Um, you know, be smiling, look positive. It encourages them to eat. If you if you're sad and you're trying to feed someone, you might kill the person's appetite. <laughs> All right. Look at how she's laughing with the resident. Okay. Residents with certain disease conditions such as Parkinson's, stroke, dementia, trauma, blindness, they may need additional help. Uh, you know, and you have to be extra patient with them when you when if they have those kind of conditions. Some of them have or need to have assistive device. There's a special spoon that comes from the kitchen that they need to have to be able to feed themselves. Um, some, like I said, some of them might need physical or verbal cues. They can feed themselves, but when they take one spoon, they say, 